Hey guys, we are back for another NECA Predator review today, only it's not a Predator, it's Machiko from the Dark Horse comic books. She comes on the standard style NECA blister card packaging for the line since it's not an ultimate release. We've got her there in the window. You can see some comic artwork alongside the Predator logo down there on the bottom. And then the back has some artwork from the comic books, a write-up, as well as a lineup for this series of figures. So let's pull her out and take a look. All right, guys, here she is out of the package, our Machiko Noguchi figure from NECA Toys. And this one's obviously a little different because it's a Predator figure, but she is definitely not a Predator. So for those that maybe aren't familiar, she is from the Dark Horse comics, from the Alien vs. Predator comics. And she actually becomes kind of brought into Predator society. She gets a mask. She gets a whole deal. She becomes what they call blooded. The whole nine yards, she is a pretty big character, all things considered. And I'm finally uh, glad to get her in plastic. I think it's a really cool thing that NECA has gotten this figure out finally. So we're going to take a look at everything we've got here. After this review, if you want to snag one for yourself, Yourself, of course, you can head on over to Big Bad Toy Store. I'll put a link down below. But as usual, we're going to start off and take a look at how she moves around and check out the articulation here. So, of course, we're going to start at the head. And she has a range of motion, but her hair really, really gets in the way. She has, a, obviously, a big mess of hair back there. So she can't really look back. She can look down a little bit. She bobbles side to side, and then she rotates. But her shoulder cannon is going to get in the way when you turn it that way. She goes, I mean, far enough. It's not restrictive in any real way. But then when you try to turn it the other way, the hair gets in the way, again, hitting the cannon. So she can't really look too far to her right. Arms go out, the shoulder pieces are rubbery, and they, they will help uh, you know get out of the way. Rotation, we do have a bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows. Hasbro, take note here, female character, bicep swivel and double joints. And all things considered, that's that's pretty good range. We've got rotation at the gauntlet, rotation at the wrist, and we've got hinges. We have got an upper diaphragm swivel, so she swivels back and forth. We bob side to side, back and forth as far as crunch go. We do have a waist twist. Legs go out, and you can get these this pad here to go under the skirt piece, so her legs go really far. Kick forward, kick back. You can rotate in there for a bit of a cut. We do, of course, have double jointed knees, so they'll go back pretty much all the way. And then you've got that same kind of ball peg style joint down at the feet, so a little bit of a rocker, hinge, and then you've got rotation as well. So she has pretty much everything you would kind of expect to see in the NECA Predator line. It's just on a different style of body and a more standard style, standard size of figure. So I think she's very well articulated. You can get her into a lot of really good poses. The only real problem is the hair and the cannon kind of get in the way of each other. Now, as far as the overall look and feel of this figure, obviously Machiko is different. She's not a predator. She's a human. So there's a lot less plastic going on here. Smaller, slimmer, shorter, pretty much any adjective you can throw in there. She is different from your normal predators. I'll give you a comparison between some predators or between a predator and other figures. But as far as this particular figure goes, I think Nick has done a pretty good job. I do like just about everything they've got going on here. I do have a couple gripes in terms of maybe a QC-ish kind of thing but not exactly a broken product or anything like that. We've got very nicely done armor here. Very much looks like the comic books. I'm very happy with that. Tons of sculpted detail throughout the back piece, throughout the, the torso, on down to the legs. Lots of dry brushing, lots of different colors. We've got a lot of uh, grays and gunmetal-y kind of colors with a little bit of a turquoise color that you can see through there. Kind of like the, uh, kind of like Hornhead almost, but a little different. And then you've got yeah, the leather covers on her boots. We've got her gloved hands, and there is paint all over these. There's even kind of paint on the inside of her hands and on the underside of the glove on the right hand. Right hand is a fist. The left hand is an open palm with a trigger finger hand, and you'll see why shortly. We do have a, you know rubber armor down here to help get out of the way for articulation. Same up on the shoulder. We've got our gauntlet over here, sculpted. Tons of detail, tons of little fine details on it. We do have retractable claws, so that's kind of a Predator standard hallmark weapon. So push them in, pull them out. They are a little flimsy. Uh, I've had to kind of bend them back into shape more than a few times, but they haven't broken. They're not broken. It's not anything like that. It's just, you know, a heads up. We, of course, do have the backpack here. We've got the shoulder cannon, and this is kind of the one thing that really keeps bugging me, is that this guy is hinged, and it's held together via a straight pin that goes laterally this way, and it keeps popping out. That's really all it is. It just keeps popping out, so then it won't really do anything. Uh, once you get it in, it's fine. It's just kind of a point of contention there. And then we've got a uh, pegged 
cannon up here so you can swivel it around and then hinge it back and forth so you can kind of have it pointing in the direction that she is attacking. Uh, as far as fine paint details, I mean, it's a predator figure, so we've got netting and it's pretty good this is probably the weakest example from the three figures that i've done recently so we've got kind of some some miss and then some smudge here on her left leg the right leg is a lot better and the back side is the best it's unfortunate that the back is better than the front but overall it's pretty good you know i'll take a, a smudge here and there because there is a lot of paint applications on this figure and there's tons i mean NECA does a really good job in general with the with the netting it's bound to not always be perfect but I do think overall, you know, I can kind of forgive that. It's not a huge thing. It's not really a big deal. It certainly doesn't, uh, it certainly doesn't stop me from enjoying this figure. And then I'm getting close into that face for a second. I do think this is a pretty good representation from NECA of this particular face. Machiko doesn't look exactly the same in every single panel on every cover or anything like that. So I think this is a pretty good interpretation of her. She is obviously Asian. That's, I mean, the name kind of gave it away to begin with. We do have the lightning bolt emblem on her forehead. It's kind of thinly applied. I don't think that's the best paint application on the figure. Uh, it's kind of faint. The rest of the paint applications on the face are nicely done. The eyes are very straight. Everything's bright and vibrant and clean and crisp, and that's fantastic. We, of course, do have Predator-style hair going on here. And again, I've mentioned she has a big head of hair. There's a lot of little sculpted detail on there. All the braids, everything is nicely done. Tons of detail. It's really hard to see sometimes, but once you get the light on it just right, you can really see all of the hard work that went into this head sculpt, into this hair sculpt. And then, of course, we do have all the little, the little paint details to kind of mark the braids in there. So, you know, in general, I think this this is a really, really solid, a solid head sculpt for something kind of out of the norm for this particular line. And really quickly, here is a size comparison, like I mentioned, of Machiko to other figures. So we, of course, have got the recent Hornhead Predator here. You can see that he towers over her. And we've got her next to Captain Phasma from the recent uh, Disney Store exclusive Black Series release. Just to give you an idea of what she looks like next to a more standard retail figure, you can see that they, they stand almost identical. So they're very, very similar in scale. She's more true, just standard six-inch style figure. Of course, the Predators are supposed to be larger, but this gives you an idea just to see exactly how much bigger they are to this particular human figure. And then as far as accessories goes, we do have a few. We've got her blaster rifle here, which I think is really, really nicely done. A lot of detail, a lot of paint on this thing, a nice wash, varying colors. I really like the kind of uh, turquoisey green color here. It really pops against the rest of the figure. It makes it stand out on its own, makes it very unique. She does have an extra hand, so you can kind of do a two-handed grab, or you can just kind of use it as a style pose hand. It works fine for either. But of course, she also does have a mask. She has as a helmet since she was you know kind of brought into the predator society that's one of the key characteristics of this figure and i think NECA's really done a good job on this one so here she is with the helmet on with the mask on and it is different obviously it's small it's more form-fitting for a human head it is relatively plain and simplistic it's just gold with kind of orange eyes which i really like we've got the cable kind of running down from the back it just kind of hangs you can hide it behind her shoulder and it's just in general it just re looks really nice i was really unsure of how this was going to fit on her face because she does have a very kind of flat face almost there's not a lot of rounded detail to the front of her head but it just sits on there perfectly you can just pop it off and it'll just sit on there no problem whatsoever so it's fantastically done and i'm very very happy that it sits as well as it does. I have had no issues with that. And then, of course, in typical NECA fashion, you do have a bunch of sculpted, painted detail in there. Stuff they don't necessarily need to do, but I can't help but praise them for it because this is the kind of stuff that sets these figures kind of apart from a lot of other things because you don't have to do this, but yet they always do. So overall, I am very happy with this figure. I have been looking forward to this particular series of Predators, even though I don't, like I've said before, get into this line too much. I've been really looking forward to these. Machiko is definitely one that I think a lot of people have been looking forward to, myself included, and I think NECA has done a fantastic job here. I don't have any true issues to really gripe about, except for that pin on the shoulder cannon, but that could just be my figure. Other than that, I think this is a home run. She's got good accessories, she's got fantastic articulation, and I think they nailed the look. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Machiko figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.